Don't give up. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to make spectacular falls that are utterly going to embarrass you. And you have to kind of continue to get up again, take that time, and work your way through it. Welcome to Rehabilitation Chips, a new podcast from Mary Freebed Rehabilitation, bringing you real stories of recovery from real patients and real clinicians. Welcome to Rehabilitation Ships, a podcast highlighting the intersection of rehabilitation and relationships. My name is Chris Mills, and I'm your host. This is the conclusion to the story featuring Peggy Maniatis, the executive director of the USS Silverside Submarine Museum in Muskegon. In the first episode, we heard from Peggy about her work at the museum and how complications following a surgery led to nerve damage and the loss of function and feeling in one of her legs. Not being able to walk definitely made it more difficult to share her love of the museum and get inside the submarine. Fortunately for Peggy, she heard about Mary Freebed Rehabilitation, and she got connected with the team in Muskegon and physical therapist Mark Stevens. If you missed the first part of the story, jump back in your podcast feed and give it a listen. Now in this episode, we're going to pick up where Peggy and Mark started working together on therapy goals, including one of getting back in the submarine. Let's dive in. It is so great for patients to have goals to share with their their clinicians. Do you ever have a time where you think and you look at somebody and you're like, I don't know if we can get this goal? Um, occasionally. Um, occasionally I'm sure I was got, one of those. <laughs> well, it's it's one of those where we, we try to come up with short-term goals and long-term goals. So having a short-term goal is something that we feel like we can achieve pretty quick. And that was uh, one of those. So Peggy's got her goals, and then I will have some ideas of things that we need to work on to achieve those. So, for instance, like rolling over in bed was one of them. Okay, so we need to make sure that we, we practice that. We need to be able to, to do all the things we need to do. But one of the things with Peggy was that getting onto the submarine came with a bunch of other different goals. So, like, what do we need to do? So we need to be able to get up and down steps. Okay, so steps needs to be a goal. Walking needs to be a goal. Okay, can you take a walker onto onto the sub? Probably not. So, okay, we need to get you walking with a cane or we need to get you walking with crutches or something like that. So all of the kind of the build up to it was trying to like simulate as much as we could in the office of like components that she would need to do here on the on the vessel so that was it was good it was challenging it really made us think um about what we were doing and how we were doing things and peggy progressed really like really quickly uh once we had her in a brace that fit uh we went from a walker to crutches from crutches to one crutch from one crutch to nothing Yes. Um, for a little while. And then she ca- like we, we put her on hold for a little while then and said, well, let's just just do it now. Just go away and do it, and then we'll, we'll bring you back in and check you out again soon. She came back in, and she was doing really good, and I felt like she'd maxed out and reached the potential for, for the brace that she had. But she hadn't met the potential that she had for recovery. So we then had to go back and then um, had to talk with insurance and talk with the doctor and orthotists and try to come up with a plan of how we can get um, Peggy into a different brace. So what we wanted was to get her in a brace that she didn't have to unlock the knee every time, um, every time she was stopping or sitting down. And we wanted a brace that would unlock when she was walking. So it would unlock so it looks like a normal walk. So a knee bends, it's not straight. Um, but it would lock when she had her foot down because she can't control that. And there's a brace um, that does do that. So we uh, we managed to get um, get approval and get her into one of those braces. And then she came back into therapy then. And we then went back steps in a sense of, okay, this is a new brace. I don't know how to use it. Um, I'm back on crutches. Uh, don't quite feel stable. Um, I'm not quite used to the fact that my knee can buckle on me now if I'm not in the right position. How do I unlock this dang thing um, to yeah. sit down? Um, the first week I had this brace, I missed my old brace. I I remember having, I won't say, a teary-eyed moment, you'll say, when I just was like, I just can't learn new, another new thing. It just was the whole process. It's like I was standing up right before. Now I'm not again. And mm-hmm. it was a whole challenge just to get myself back to, it's okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. But, yeah. 
and yeah. uh, think because it, and it's it's just technique. It's it's figuring out how to use the brace, how to work it, and it only took one session for us to teach Peggy how to unlock and lock that knee um, to be able to sit down. And I think the next board meeting, you were one of the first to sit, right? Yes. I was able to get in and sit down on a chair. It was wonderful. And I was able to get up on that chair with minimal amounts of not having to stop as soon as you stood up and try and lock again. And, uh, and the other thing that was lovely is that since I had that first brace, I stopped wearing pants because it was so difficult to be able to find the locking mechanism and try and do it and it was chewing up every pair of pants too and so I wore dresses and skirts for oh I'd say a good six months because it just was too difficult to try and find the the mechanisms and to try and do it at least Mm -hmm. then you have that visual I can see where it's at and I'm supposed to be able to do it right so so much of recovery is the person that drive the being able to not give up but it seems from in this story having the right tech having the right gear would peggy be where she is now inside the sub if she wasn't in this no device no no No. uh if she didn't have the the brace now she could get into the sub with the old brace um with the locked knee it was just not she just wouldn't have been able to do as many other things so going through the hatches i they taught me how to do the ladders that one we learned how to do pretty well but going through the hatches where you need to Stand, have your brace locked, unlock it, get pull one leg through, pull your other leg through, then manage to get yourself balanced and relock it to walk the next 20 feet to get into another hatch. To do that again was almost impossible. Mm-hmm. First time we did the sub, how long did it take us to go from the front to the back? Oh, probably half an hour. Yeah. And I was so excited. Right. Half an hour. It's like, oh, my God, I'm down here. It's great. So your first goal of rolling over in bed happened pretty quick. It was wonderful. It was the first goal. And um, sleep, I cannot say how wonderful sleep is. And it really helps your mindset a lot because when you're exhausted and you're feeling guilty because you're exhausted and you're feeling bad about waking up other people all the time, that just took off one whole layer of guilt right off the top. And the extra sleep was incredible. And that just sets your mindset much better. So your plan of getting back into the sub, Mark, you know, started at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so you were making all these little steps. What was it like after you got the the new brace and you first started coming in here? You said it took 30 minutes to do that first time across. But how many times did you work in the sub? Three, I think. I think the first session we came out here, we just stayed in the torpedo room. We just did the steps. We we did, there's a set of stairs down onto one level, and then there's a set of stairs down into the torpedo room. And that was it. That was that was the first session. Can we get in? Can we get out? Yes. Um, so we had, to fig- we had to figure out, can we get in, can we get out, before we started doing anything um, anything where we got all the way in, because it would be quite an extraction to get, to get someone out of here if they couldn't get out. Um, so we needed to make sure we had that figured out. And then I think the next time we came down, we started to work on hatches. Mm-hmm. Um, and we managed to go through all the hatches and make our way all the way to the end. Um, and then I think we did one session then after with the new brace. Yes. So. And um, I think it was with the new brace that I was actually able to get up on um, the exterior of the sub and climb up to the shears. Oh, we I did. Didn't, I did not make it all the way to the top of the lookouts. But I was able to make it onto the cigarette deck of the um, the. Sub. Is it called the cigarette deck? It's called the cigarette <laughs> deck. Very healthy. <laughs> and so it was. Um, that was something that I did not think that I was ever going to get to do because I had done that right before I had had my hip replacement, and um, we had had a ceremony honoring. Um, the military men and women that were fighting the virus and we had done a salute to them and it was something all the historic naval ships have done and I was up there then and it was just very difficult to be able to watch the world going on and you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. I remember when we went up that day that was um, that was really fun because there was I think we tried three different three different ways to get up there yes and the final way there's um and we had one of the um people out here taking pictures from mary Freebed as well when we were when we were doing that and um there's one picture of us just getting up to the rail 
and all of us are laughing yes. because we it was like I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. And it looks like it's this really joyous moment of us all climbing up, but it was like sheer panic of like, we're stuck. What do we do? Um, but we, yeah. And it was just like, try trial okay, and error. We'll try again. And yeah. that's, that's been the process all the way through. It's been, well, let's try this. Okay. That didn't work. Let's modify it. Let's try something slightly different. Let's try this. Yeah. But Peggy's a go-getter. She's figured a bunch of stuff out on her own as well. Like I've, between times we've been in the sub, she's gone through and said, I've changed the way I've done this, which is really cool. So Peggy, as you've been working with Mark, your physical therapist, did you see any other therapists or any other disciplines while you're working? Oh, I learned an entire new vocabulary of things. I still can't say exactly what Dr. McKinney's title is. It's a physi- physiatrist. physiatrist. Yeah. And then there was Mary uh, Marianne Wiwara, She's an occupational therapist. And then I never knew that there was a whole field of people that just made braces either. And the work that they do there, and it's just amazing. I learned so many different things and work with so many different people. And the occupational therapist, where Mark was working at getting me standing upright and able to stand, they helped me with the the little things in the world that are so important, like how to get into a car and how to do some of the basic things around the house with hints on, like, you know, no one really wants to do the dishes or clean your kitchen, but they're part of life or run a vacuum. And so she worked with me on how to practice, how to maintain my balance. And here, let's try five different ways to see if we can do something like this. And the concepts that she gave me about um, figuring out how to get in and out of a car um, were just incredible. And meeting each and every one that focused on a different aspect because it's real easy just to focus on the physical end of it, getting you standing upright. But there's life is so much more than just the walking. And it's, you know, it's all the things that you do that relate to other people and doing at least part of what you used to do at home so that it takes the burden off of others is, is very important. And so the occupational therapy was great. And, man, I never knew that there was people in an actual school that you went to to learn how to make a brace. And I bet you they have a name, don't they? What are our brace The, or, the orthotists. Orthos- so that's our O&P office, so orthotics and prosthetics. Yeah. yeah. And so I said there was a whole team. Wonderful. Always supportive. Mark, in all your time working with Peggy, did you ever come across any, like, unsuspected challenges or hurdles that you guys had to cross together? Um, there's always hurdles and there's always things that you have to, that you have to modify or change or, or figure, figure different ways out of doing, doing stuff. I think the big hurdle for me was when we reached a point where I didn't know if we could achieve more. Um, and that was with the, with the other brace. There was just, there was a few things that we wanted to be able to do that we just couldn't, couldn't quite get. So ramps was one of those. So there's there's ramps to get on and off the vessel. And when you've got a knee and an ankle that's locked out. And even just a handicapped ramp on a sidewalk. Uh-huh. It's meant to be there to assist. But when your your ankle doesn't move, your toe is two inches up off the ground. And it's not very stable. To... Right. So we just had a really hard time getting up and down ramps. So we, we managed to figure out flat surfaces great. And we managed to figure out stairs really well. Um, walking with no assistive device, but then as soon as you got to a ramp, all of a sudden you're stuck. Um, so unless there was a rail with a ramp for her, she she would have a hard time or even turning sideways to walk down sideways. So um, that was one of the things that was, was like a, a big challenge was, well, where do we go from here? And the fact that she still got ankle movement, the brace that we were in had her ankle locked out and knee locked out. So we were like, well... Um, maybe we need a brace that the ankle moves um, because if the ankle moves, it'll adjust to the angle of the of the ramp. Um, if the knee unlocks, then it will um, it will help out with normal walking. So it was just trying to figure out. So the, I think the ramp was the one that was probably more more challenging than actually getting into the sub. Yeah, it was, but it was all part of the whole process. Right. I remember we spent. One morning, just figuring out for you understood how to do it, but I certainly didn't, how to take a step off of a curb without having anything to support me when I got down. That was 
That was a big one, too. Mm-hmm. So it really seems like you guys worked well together. I know you worked with a bunch of other people when you were at Mary Freebed. But tell me about just that, that connection of, of really working well with your physical therapist, the person who's there to help you. What was it like working with Mark? Very easy. You could always tell when I would say something and he would like disappear for a moment and he would like, it not, he was physically be there, but his mind would just go <laughs> off and I could tell he was just thinking about something and trying to put two and two together to figure out how I could do what it is. And I don't think I ever stumped him, which was utterly amazing because I had been through, you know, the physical therapy after the rehab of the, for the hip but they had no clue on the simple things that, you know, to get me from the point of being on a walker, they basically said, we're sorry. You know, this is this is it. Just, you know, get used to the walker and get used to the, the knee brace and, you know, that's where you'll be. And um, Mark just never thought like that. He always just went one step further. And it was almost as he listened very much so to what I was saying, and he would pick up on cues that I wasn't even knowing that I was giving, and that was impressive. Mark, what about your thoughts of working with Peggy? You probably have so many patients, you know, on your your list, but what was special about Peggy and and working with her? Uh, I think Peggy was the, it was the challenges. It was the, 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 like, we'd meet a goal and we'd make a new goal. I feel like every session we'd meet we'd meet a goal and make a new goal. So it was like, well, okay, so we can do that. Well, what else can we do? Um, what else is difficult for you right now? Oh, this is actually difficult for me. All right, well, let's work on that. How do we how do we achieve that? But one one was the those things. But Peggy's a real go getter as well. So there wasn't anything we did where she was like, no, I can't do that. That's really good. Like if someone comes to you and says, well, I can't, I can't do that, or I don't think I could try that. Peggy never did that. So it was like whatever we threw at her, she tried it. Um, wasn't always successful at it, but I tried it. <laughs> uh, but it was a way of figuring out different ways of doing it. And we got to a couple points when we were in the sub and there was a few different spots that you wanted to go. And we had to then make a decision. It was like, I don't think you're going to get down into that. Um, which, what's the name of the one spot that we tried to go down below? Oh, um, there is a tool room. A tool room? Below, yeah, there's a tool room directly below us where we're sitting in the, in the galley, um, the submarine has lots of storage places, and they were not built for middle-aged ladies that cannot go down easily on ladders. They're built for young men, you know, probably 18 to 20 years old that are physically fit. And so um, I know that I will not get down to see the battery compartments again, right. but I'll trust my staff. Yeah. So that was one of those where, where we had to say, no, that's not going to happen. Um, and we didn't do many of those no. um, where we're like, no, that's not going to happen. But that was one. And then the um, conning tower. The conning tower and well. one of the things, too, is that since it's a historic vessel, you do absolutely everything that you can to keep it in the shape that it was in during the time that it was in service. And so, therefore, you know, I probably could have done a few other things if I had decided to add handrails or something like that, grab bars. But that would take away from the historic nature of the vessel, and that cannot happen. Right, which was tr- which is true. We said if there was a handrail right here, you could do it. And she was like, well, then, then we can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was... Yeah, you cannot put in a handrail for me to take away from the historic nature of the vessel. Yeah. And that takes real commitment to your mission and the work that you're, you do here, to you're putting the submarine before yourself. Well, that's the whole mission of the organization. The mission is to honor the veterans. And so therefore then you have to put them first and foremost in absolutely everything that you do. And being able to allow people to understand what the veteran went through because most people don't know very many veterans. And if they see something, they may see a news clipping or they may see something and they face so many challenges when they're finished with the service, whether or not they have a disability or not, but they deserve our respect because they gave it all to defend our country and they answered that call never knowing what it is that we were going to ask for them. So to honor them and to not to ch- materially change our vessel is key. You're listening to Rehabilitation Ships, a podcast from Mary Freebed about the intersection of rehabilitation and relationships. 
Guests on today's podcast are Peggy Maniatis, the Executive Director of the USS Silverside Submarine Museum, and Mary Freebed Physical Therapist Mark Stevens. Make sure you subscribe and rate wherever you listen to your podcasts. Now let's get back and hear the rest of the story. So you are sometime past your work with Mark. Where do you feel you're at now physically, if you had to say like on a scale of 1 to 100? I know you can't repair the nerve, but with all with the brace and the work and the new skills you've had, you've worked on, where do you think you're at? Understanding my limitations and understanding other people and their comfort level around me. So um, at Christmas time, we went to Arizona to visit my brother and his family. And I got nieces and nephews and um, other siblings. And we all went. And we decided my sister really wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. And um, like, that's great. Did not really look to see how far it was from the parking lot to the actual rim of the canyon. I'm not talking about climbing down into the canyon. I'm just talking about physically going from the parking lot to... My blood pressure was going up a little bit then because you were starting to talk about the Grand Canyon. I was like, you didn't. <laughs> I made it to the rim, and I found that to be my ultimate accomplishment. The thing was, though, that I had to allow myself to be in a wheelchair to get there okay. because there was just no way that I could walk a mile and to be able to get to that point. But I also didn't want to hold anybody back, and I also didn't want anybody else because a lot of times when you're with your family... They don't want to leave you behind. Right. And so you have to figure out what's going to be comfortable for everyone. It was it was incredible. I enjoyed it, took it for what it is. I raced around them in the wheelchair and spit past them and said, ha ha, catch up with me, uh, and made a game of it. And so that they didn't have to feel bad that they were leaving me behind. And I've been working on trying to build stamina. You know, it's kind of difficult to walk outside these days, so I've been mall walking. And the wonderful thing about mall walking is there's a bench every 20 feet or so. And so you can go as far until you can't go, and then you can rest a bit and move on. And so I've been doing that and just trying to find new ways to continue to increase my abilities. Peggy, how does it feel now to be to be back inside in the sub and being able to work at your best new normal? How does it feel to be back at that point? Wonderful, calming, um, part of things. Um, it's an incredible sense of familiarity that you never thought, I never thought that I would get back again. And where now people no longer look at me and wonder how I'm going to do something or feel uncomfortable around me, most people don't feel that anymore. And so that's the most incredible gift that they gave me. And you, yeah, I mean, you're moving so good now as well. Like, I just think back to the first eval walker, brace around your ankle. I, could, um, I had difficulty making it from the reception desk to Dr. McKinney's office. Right. And I, like, I pulled up just as you were walking out of the museum today to come onto the sub. And I, so I stayed in my car and watched you. It's really tough to tell what's going like what's wrong like what what the issue is now you're walking so smooth you you walked you'd stop you turn to talk to people you'd walk again you'd stop you'd turn you didn't have any walking device with you and you just looked really comfortable which is great it's really thank cool you for that see. gift yeah. for your gift of your knowledge and your being able to apply it to me and as i um, said that one of the nicest gifts that i got or nicest compliment Someone's. I was wearing a suit, and someone recommended to me. They go, you know, you're nicely dressed. You really should find some nicer shoes. And I was just smiling ear to ear because I'm like, if that's all you're noticing is that I'm wearing some orthopedic shoes, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. It's very impressive. They're pretty cool for orthopedic shoes, though. Hey, they are. <laughs> they are. And, Mark, you said, too, you know, you've seen her at other points since she stopped working, and she's doing things differently, and she is still making progress. Oh yeah, and that and that's it. That's that once the basic instructions and the basic. This is how you use your brace. This is the best way to do something. This is the this is the textbook way of doing something. We had to throw some of the textbooks out um, because it just didn't um, it didn't match up to what to what she would do. And like one time we came down 
and to the sub and we taught a few different things and then i came down another time and she switched the switched around the way she did um going through the hatch and i'm like well that's not textbook but it works um for you and um she's like well i've already been down since i got the new brace i already went down and done this once so it was like the confidence level to be able to go well i've already been down and done it once so it's like well great that's um that's good and that's kind of what what Peggy did, I think once she figured out how to do some things, then it was like it just opened a new a new door and a new ability to do some more things. The Mary Freebed gave me the tools, and then afterwards it was up to me to mm-hmm. use them um, because a lot of times you're handed the tools, and it's scary. You don't want to do it. It's sometimes just much easier to say, I'm just not. And But once you have the tools, it's up to you to use them. Right. And... I'm grateful for all the tools you guys handed me. Mm-hmm. Well, you you did it, so that's that's the great thing. Peggy, what's what's next for you? What's what's on the horizon? I want to travel independently. That's um, my children are scattered throughout the country, and I would love just to be able to go and visit them on my own. But if any of you have been in an airport recently, you realize they're really, really large. Mm -hmm. And I still need assistance in certain things to be able to get on and off a plane or to – I do not know how I would rent a car that I could actually drive. So there's a lot of little challenges that I want to do. So I want to visit my kids and I want to actually be – when we – when I do go visit them, I want to be able to do the things with them. So that's why I keep pushing myself to extend my – length that I can walk and um, to continue to try and do as many of the stretching and the strengthening exercises so that I can continue to get back to where I was. Mm -hmm. Mark, for you, how does it make you feel when you help a patient like Peggy reach their goals? Oh, it's, it's, um, it's quite humbling, actually, to be in a position where you work with people in their most most vulnerable moment um, and actually get to be part of their journey that's it's a really the like it's the best part of the job is to be able to get people to achieve their goals and and see people back where they wanted to be it's really really rewarding like there's always there there are times where people don't get back to where they want to be and there are times where it doesn't always go um as planned but when when it does um it's it's amazing um and yeah and and patients all the time they they are like i'm so thankful for for you and so thankful for the work you've done and it's like it i didn't really do much i gave some advice and i gave some ideas and we we talked about things and but ultimately it was you that did it um so just being able to be part of that journey is is huge peggy we might not find somebody who is an executive director of a submarine museum who's been through what you have been through. But to somebody else who has a big obstacle in their life, what kind of advice would you give to that person? Don't give up. Um, It is really, really easy on the bad days. And trust me, I had enough of those bad days where the mere thought of putting my two feet on the floor in the morning, it's like, I'd just rather stay in bed. Or it's really easy to shut yourself into the house and not be out around people and to to continue trying. So my words for them is to don't give up. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to make spectacular falls that are utterly going to embarrass you. And you have to kind of continue to get up again, take that time, and work your way through it. Well, Peggy and Mark, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on the podcast today. I really appreciate you sharing what you did and uh, just a lot about how you guys have been working together. Thank you. Thank you. What a great way to wrap up this story. Thanks, Peggy, so much for that great advice and for being a guest on the show. And since we've recorded this episode, Peggy has taken on a new opportunity. She is leading the Wright Museum of World War II in New Hampshire. Congrats, Peggy. And you are listening to Rehabilitation Ships, a podcast from Mary Freebed Rehabilitation. Every month, we'll share amazing stories just like this, highlighting the intersection of rehabilitation and relationships. And we're really excited to be sharing some new episodes in the new year. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love to hear your feedback and any story ideas you might have for future episodes. 
Send us a note at podcast at maryfreebed.com. If you or a family member or friend may be in need of physical therapy, visit maryfreebed.com. The expert team can help with any aches, pains, or strains. And with that, I'm Chris Mills, your host for Rehabilitation Chips. And until next time, thanks for listening and stay well.